Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Doug from Amen Moto, and we're going to start a new feature. We're going to be calling Scott, Scott on, your, on bike. your Bike. Scott on Your Bike. That's a scary thought, isn't it? <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to talk to Doug about his motorcycle. We're going to find out everything we can about this bike, and then I'm going to hop on it, and we're going to see what I think about his motorcycle. So for starters, what, what do we have here? All right, so this is a uh, 2015 Triumph Explorer 1200. Uh, this is the base model, the XA model. Uh, this is a Gen 1 bike when they came out with the 1200s starting in uh, 2011. So this is the final year of the Gen 1 bikes. Um, 1215 cc's, Woo! three cylinders of fun, 135 horsepower, and I think it's 86 foot-pounds of torque at 9,000 RPM. Ooh. And uh, it's a fun thing. It's, uh, it's pretty heavy. Weighs in at about 570 pounds dry. It can carry uh, about 460 pounds of gear and people. Uh, so that puts this almost in the thousand, well over the thousand pound range when you load it all up. Yeah, so, more than. Uh, She's a big girl, and um, this is uh, Triumph's uh, second attempt at uh, adventure bikes. They also have an 800cc uh, Explorer along with a 1000cc they offered uh, about 10 years ago. All right, so let's start with let's start with how long have you had it? So I purchased this bike uh, in January. Of this year, of this year, 2017. So, yep. So I've had it about six months now. I've got 6,000 miles on it, and uh, Scott and I have had a lot of fun. Uh, we've named we've I've named this bike. Uh, this is oh, oh, that's the important question I was going to get to. Oh, the I was going to get to. Every bike needs a name, right? That's a that's it. Now that's that's actually a point of contention because there are people who say you don't name a bike, right. but they're crazy, and they're wrong. <laughs> so what have you named this, this girl's bike? name? Is Misadventure. <laughs> This. this adventure, and that's about what I do because I rarely use maps or anything like that. So I'm getting <laughs> lost a lot, so I'm having a lot of really having a lot of fun with this bike. I, I wasn't in the adventure bike uh, market until um, I drove uh, uh, Cafe, Pod, Cafe Racer podcast Steve Grasso's uh, KTM. Fell in love with the adventure thing, and uh, Scott and I made it our way to the Triumph dealer in uh, Pompano Beach, Two Wheels World, and uh, Jim set me up with this bike, um, and I've uh, had a lot of fun with it. Now, funny story, you were not originally thinking about the Triumph Adventure bikes. We went to the Triumph store just to, just to look at the Triumphs for me, and you were thinking about the Super Tenere or some of the other bikes out there, and we get to the Triumph store, and what happens? So, exactly, Scott. So we, we go to the uh, Triumph store, and we're looking for a Bonneville for Scott, and um, uh, I see these on the showroom floor, and uh, they're reasonably priced bikes um, in the new models, the Gen 2 bikes, and they had a 2017 on the showroom floor. And you guys can come on through. It's okay. Thank you. How you doing? You guys like motorcycles? Yeah. I bet you don't like them as much as we do. <laughs> <laughs> world to look for a Bonneville for Scott um, and uh, Jim at the store there caught me looking at the uh, the new models the 2017 uh, Triumph Explorers 1200s and uh, we had just gotten back from the Yamaha dealer and looked at a Super Tenere and uh, Jim goes hey I've got a deal for you <laughs> and I said uh, What's do that? I have a deal have for a, you I know, when your salesman says that you always <laughs> wonder, you gotta wonder sometimes so uh, so he took me in the back, and he had two of these uh, new old stock bikes in the back, the 2015s, the Gen 1s, made me a really, really nice deal on this bike, and I've been very happy with it. I haven't done a lot of off-roading with it yet. Um, I thought I knew a little bit about off-roading. Turns out I know nothing about off-roading. <laughs> and uh, at uh, almost probably 700 pounds, over 700 pounds of me on the bike, uh, it's a bit of a challenge, shall we say, in the sugar sand down here in South Florida. A little top um, heavy? Kind of heavy, kind of top heavy. Now, I'd been warned about that. Um, but maybe with some new knobby tires and uh, a little bit more experience and some schooling, I can uh, get the handle on the on-road on stuff, off-road stuff. But on the street, wonderful bike. Wonderful, wonderful. 
So let's talk about some of the things you've added to the bike, eh? So that brings us to the special part of our show. The important questions we're asking. Which is part of? Part of Scott on Your Bike is, show, show us, us your, your farkles. farkles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for those who are uninitiated, a farkle is a functional sparkle. In other words, the add-ons that you've added onto your bike, the things you put on your bike that it didn't come with. So let's talk about what have, what have you adorned this motorcycle with that didn't come with originally? So for fear of uh, dropping the bike and hurting it, the first thing I've done is bought the Triumph uh, engine guards and the Triumph uh, skid pan for the bottom. It replaces a plastic one which you get from stock. With Those the, are uh, Triumph parts? These are Triumph parts, yep. And uh, I also put a uh, protector for the radiator. I got a screen here in for the radiator. Mm -hmm, beautiful honeycomb. So this, direct from Triumph, bolted right up, excellent fit. Um, and then I started buying some uh, off-brand stuff. So one of the things I wasn't real comfortable with, and this is a very stand-up bike, very straightforward, a little bit too much knee bend for me. So I bought these uh, special foot pegs which lower the, the, uh, my feet about three quarters of an inch. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but boy, the difference it made for my knees was really wonderful. So, Do you remember who makes that? I do not. We'll look it up and post we'll it. We'll have to have it in the video. Yeah, exactly. it in the video. And did you have to change the, uh, the brake pedal? I had to readjust the brake and mm -hmm. the shifter and all that stuff to compensate for it. Mm -hmm. Much better though, it gives me a little bit more bend in my knees. Let's take a look at this side of it. Did you have to adjust the shifter as well? Yep, yep. Shifter had to adjust down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Brake was more of an issue than the shifter. And this is a replacement um, peg as well, right? Not just the bracket, but the peg, the whole everything, thing, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Very beefy piece. Hey, we got away from the biker. We got away from the biker, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's very beefy. It looks like you could jump up and down on that thing all day. Yep, it holds me up, so that says a lot. Mm -hmm. Up front, uh, wasn't happy with the stock wind protection, uh, so I bought this Madstad uh, windscreen, and uh, it adjusts up and down, and then it works with the adjustment forward and back that you get from uh, So Triumph. it's not just it's this open. piece, it's also it's this, this bracket. It's this black piece mm -hmm. that's in the back, and it helps direct, unlike the stock one, you get more wind that comes up through the back side of the screen and it directs more wind over your head. So mm. a lot less buffeting. The only thing I'm not really happy about is it probably could be a little bit wider for me. Um, if I sit up and put my arms back, I get a lot of wind coming around. Wind just seems to hit my shoulders if I come off the, uh, the uh, uh, handlebars a little bit. So maybe, maybe do something to make these a little bit wider. Again. Winglets or something. Yep. So this piece moves with the existing Triumph adjustment, Forward and, and then back. this also moves on the black bracket up additionally. And, up and down. Very cool. All right. All right. Um, also added, these are, I guess you said the word winglets. These little winglets help deflect some of the air to keep it coming from uh, around and blowing up into your helmet. So between these two things, a lot more comfortable at highway speeds. Still not quite where I would want it to be. The downside, living in South Florida, is this bike gets really hot now because I don't have the wind blowing on mm -hmm. it anymore. Uh, it makes it really tough. Just bought these. These are my Bark Buster hand protection. Um, again, so when a dog is barking at you, it <laughs> yes, that's what that's for. protects me from dogs. Mm -hmm. My Bark Busters or trees. Yep. Um, again, it helps block some of the wind going uh, against my shoulders. So Got a fully, fully integrated aluminum mm -hmm. housing all the way around there. Yep. It's yeah. not really joking around this piece is uh it's not just this piece of plastic it's this entire uh aluminum guard so bike goes down in your hands inside there you're not getting squished right i also added some uh some soft foam pads i think these are called bar buddies or something like that you just roll them on top i wanted a little more uh, i've got my jibby tank bag um this is an expandable tank bag i don't know how many liters this is mm -hmm. um where I keep my phone and my sun pass and all the important stuff goes up in here. Mm -hmm. uh, really easy to Your take. paper maps, you know, old school paper maps paper, right on top. Which, which I still do, by the way. <laughs> it, it's, uh, if you can get a ring mount for a, a tank mount, really handy. There's a special ring that goes on top of the tank. Um, and then go. the tank bag hooks on and that's it. It's stuck down. Mm -hmm. right? It's also got a tether on it in case it comes loose. I've never had it come loose. But. And we have... And I have power running into it so I can recharge my phone and things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's plugged into the stock um, power, port. power port, which is yep. where on this bike? Which is right down on, by the head, back behind the head. So you don't have to run a cable way down under your tank, all the way down under the seat with a wire coming way back here. You've got power right up here somewhere. Yep. 
And then you also have more power back here again, right? I do. There is more power back there for future. Uh... One last thing up front. My rocks uh, bar extenders. I uh, added these to get me in a little bit more upright position. You can adjust these forward and back. Um, and it gets me uh, about an inch and three quarters, a little more mm -hmm. distance to bring mm -hmm. the bars up. Very easy installation. All of these things that I have on this bike so far, are very easy installation. <laughs> Um, so, I haven't had to drill any holes, do anything, all that stuff just bolts right on. It's been really, really so good. So this allows you to do the patented, trademarked adventure bike standing up standing on up. the bike because this yep. is so much higher now you can drive while standing yep. on your way to Starbucks. <laughs> and my favorite thing, my Jessies, my Al Jesse mm -hmm. paneers. Right. Um, these are also known as leg savers. Leg savers. And I hope I never have to use them in that. Now these are super beefy. These are probably... The beefiest panniers I've ever seen on a motorcycle. These are not, I mean, I know that the Touratech stuff and everything else is really high, heavy duty, but this is not screwing around aluminum with plastic corners. Very easy to take on and off. They are fully lockable, watertight. Um, this is the removal. Uh, yep, you run through this dial, the, the whole mm -hmm. thing comes right I thought right that off. might turn on the shower. I guess I'm wrong. It's yeah, probably not no, the, the, shower the shower comes from up above. All right. Yeah, it doesn't affect it by yep. that. Uh, but again, they seal up lockable. Mm -hmm. um, these are the smaller versions of the uh, Odyssey bags from them. Uh, these are the 8 inch bags. They also offer a 10 inch bag, uh, which I didn't want to go with because it would make the bike wider than my handlebars. So I figured mm -hmm. if I could get the handlebars through something, then I'm mm -hmm. safe back here as long don't as I get don't hung turn. up on your bags, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's about uh, you got your you got your sticker collection. My sticker collection. Well started there. The most important one right you got here. Amen Moto sticker. Right. Of course. The other important one. Hey mm -hmm. Richie. Wild bad Richie's got wild bad stickers. Yep. Right. And uh, the uh, motorcycle sports touring association. I just joined them. Sure. Down to Key West. The Ace Cafe. Ace Cafe. Awesome guys. Very cool. Archie's and mm -hmm. Stewart. Great restaurant. And your SCCA my sticker. SCCA and my Do South Brewery sticker. So I'm still working on my collection. Working it. Yep. Getting I think, there. I think what I want to do next is start putting my state maps on here as we start adventuring. That's, that's a really good I'm idea. State maps on here. Now we were talking about the state map usually ends up being huge, right? And you were saying maybe a different idea would be... Yeah, let's do uh, state flags. Yeah, flags would be a really, really yep. good idea. Straight state flags. So, so, so these I don't are see. great, great bags. I'm really happy with these. Mm -hmm. You'd buy those again in a heartbeat, yeah? I would buy these again. Yep. Yep. So this bike has a really, really big alternator in it. You can power the world on this bike. And you, if you want phone and GPS and anything that you need to recharge, all that stuff, um, this has one of the biggest alternators. So I want to load up on my electronic stuff. So I don't have my fog lights yet. I'm mm -hmm. getting some fog lights on here. Um, there's a really nice space right here. Uh huh. What would go there? For a Garmin Zumo. Wink, right. Wink, wink. Garmin, Garmin if you're Zumo. watching. <laughs> <laughs> would be perfect right here. I just want to say to the Garmin <laughs> reps out there, my friend Doug does amazing reviews, and he'd love to review <laughs> a, Garmin, a Zumo. Garmin, what is it, a Zumo? Zumo, <laughs> Zumo yeah. And then um, probably back here, what I think that we're going to do for touring um, is I'm going to go with uh, dry bags, maybe one big one or some smaller ones, uh, like our friend Craig Ripley, um, and I'm just going to buy some Jesse offers uh, little racks that fit on top of these and I can just put dry bags on the top and, here. and this is really nice how this entire surface is all the same level you've got this 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 nothing's too nothing's tall or too, tall. too short I can bolt down stuff this right, could be your cooking right your stairs. cooking surface if you're camping <laughs> out you know put the bike on the center stand yep. so it's a really really fun bike surprisingly uh, quick mm -hmm. and uh, shaft driven shaft driven Three cylinder. It is very quick. Bit of a challenge in the uh, off road, but we're working on that. That's but probably another thing I want to do is I want to get another second set of wheels so that right. I can buy knobby tires and uh, switch over back and forth. Real easy to change tires on a swing arm bike. All right, so now we come to part of the show, which is really what this is about is Scott on your bike. So Scott's going to uh, suit up and uh, we're going to head out and uh, he's going to give his review while we uh, zoom around the streets. All right, so let me swing up this massive kickstand here. It's not, it's not as high as it looks like it's going to be standing on it. I'm flat-footed right now, both feet, comfortably. Let's see if we can figure out the ignition sequence here. We turn the key, 
Watch the speedo do its little dance here. All right. There we go. Ignition sequence start. And off we get. <laughs> let's see here. All right. Let's off we get. All right. Well, those pegs are nice and low. Oh, that's so comfortable. I sat on this bike when you got it, and it was a bit feeling a little bit higher up. All right, very comfy. I like the way the seat just kind of cups my buttocks. Just hold me like a mommy holding a baby. All right, throttle is very loose. Very sensitive throttle. Very sensitive and loose throttle. Right, the bike feels very nimble for its size. It feels like this is going to be this massive, gigantic, lumbering at at from Star Wars, but it feels like just flying a little X Wing around, you know? Not that I've actually flown an X Wing, I don't have personal, first hand experience there, but um, taking off there, it felt like very encouraging to just go ahead and lift my feet and let the bike do its thing. There we go, flat footed again. All right, here we go, off we get. Yeah, very flicky. The bike wants to lean over. Whee! What is this god awful heat between my legs? <laughs> okay, how do I turn? How do I turn off the seat heater? There's a switch uh, below your knee. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the key in the front turns that off. <laughs> wow, that's hot. Now, it was, to be fair, it was sitting in the sunlight. So, even the seat itself, but um, against my inner thighs, there's some warmth there. Very smooth. Wow, it just feels like it just wants to run away. Very nice. Smooth like a T120, I might say. But 50% more cylinder. Very easy to read the uh, instruments. The, um, the numbers on there are huge compared to my bike. So very easy to read, and they're they're tipped right back at your face. So it's a very well thought out display, isn't it? And if you if you get homesick and you don't want to be around anymore, you hit this home button, and the bike just drives you home. You can take your hands off and just sit back and take a nap, and the bike that's what we're, that's how it happens, right? I think so. You got to use a cruise control too. Yeah, you put on so, cruise control. Yeah. Wait, oh, cruise. hold on. I didn't even think this bike has cruise control. This bike has cruise control. So, which is not active till you're doing about 35 miles an hour, and, and it's got a pillow. You know, if you're feeling tired, which I have used today. Just lay your head down. Just lay your head down on the pillow. Take a little nap. The the windshield and the instruments and everything feel very very far away from me compared to what I'm used to because, you know, if this is a similar layout, my instruments would be right here, right on top of the bars, mm -hmm. and yours is a good four inches past that, maybe even more. So the front of the bike is a mile away. And I suppose that's something to be aware of if you're trying to pull a wall terrific joke on somebody and bump their tire. It's going to be a lot closer than you thought it was, right? Yep. So you sit down, you sit down inside that bike. Yeah, that's what it feels like. You're sitting inside it. Okay. Off we get as I over rev your engine. All right. So one thing we did not mention is that engine revs to 10,000 RPM. Good Lord. So you did not over rev my engine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the CAC actually goes to 12. I'm sure you don't want to take it up there, but... Yeah, I have not exercised the bike in that way. You hit the rev limiter at some point, but I have, 1,200 uh, is... Uh, I have not done that. I have not needed to do that. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, you kind of sit in this bike. I feel like the bike's surrounding me. Even though I'm obviously sitting on it and on the outside of it, it feels like I'm surrounded by a motorcycle. Like I'm in a little encapsulated... What were those, those light bikes on Tron, right? You kind of sit down inside of it. Also a very upright seating position, which is uh, I've grown to like with the adventure bikes. Mm-hmm. You know, it feels it feels very light. The bike feels very light. It looks like it's going to be a heavy bike, but out here on the road, it feels really light and nimble. And then you put it in the dirt, and it feels completely opposite. <laughs>
Well, so does the T120 Bonneville. That's true. It feels very different in the dirt as well. <laughs> so for uh, dirt riding, I found that I let 10 pounds of air out of the tires, front mm -hmm. and back. And, uh, Does that make a difference? It's not the best, but it makes a big difference. Um, nobbies would really be the best. Yeah. But I do so much street riding, I'm not sure I want to dedicate to nobbies yet. So, so the difference between this bike and the new uh, Gen 2 bikes is the Gen 2 bikes have the adjustable suspension, uh, and the throttle modes, mm -hmm. um, the air ducting off the radiator is a little bit better. It ports it out past your legs a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, a few updates on the engine. I think it's three more horsepower. Um, so it's just kind of finalizing some things they missed on the first gen, I think. Mm -hmm. Turn signals are easy to reach on yours. So Triumph has been working on the ergonomics on all their bikes, just moving things around a little bit, making things easier to reach with uh, thumbs and uh -huh. Things that primates have, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The integrated kill switch start switch is nice on the newer bikes. So you've got the kill and run and then a start switch. The newer bikes have a three position, and the third one, when you let go of it, comes back off and stays in the center. So you, you forward is kill, your middle is run, and down is start. And then after it starts, you let go and it goes back to run. That's kind of a removal of an extra switch and button. One less piece. And you can't accidentally leave the run switch in off when you try to start it, because as soon as you try to start it, you're moving it. Now, who would do that? No, I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody would actually leave it in off and then think their battery was dead and push it all over the place, try push starting it a few times, get someone to get their pickup out to try and jump start. Nobody, I know. Not only once. Would ever do that. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Did it happen twice? Yes. <laughs> I didn't hear about the second one. All right, just to let you know, we're doing an illegal U-turn. Is there a sign that says don't do that? Yep. Aw. Oh. But that's Sorry. okay. Sorry. Don't they know who we are? Oh, no left turn here, too? <laughs> I need to go left. All right, this is straight on there. We'll go down and do another. Yet another. Oh, I accidentally turned on high beams. That's cool. I do that a lot. I don't remember getting near it. I'll uh, do the wave to another motorcycle and then hit the high beams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put your hand back onto it. Right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Off we get. The only thing that seems to be missing is a big growl. The bike is kind of uh, very polite down. Right? A very, a very calm hum to the engine. Yeah, I went from a cruiser, a big one, uh, 1500cc uh metric cruiser bike with lots of nice noise and I went to that. Initially I was not very happy and looking at mufflers and things like that, new mufflers uh -huh. for this bike, but I've gotten used to it now and when I'm uh, riding back in the dirt and stuff, it doesn't seem to bother the mm -hmm. the uh, animals, things like that. Oh yeah, good point. So it's kind of cool. I get to see some things that I wouldn't get to see on a loud bike. My neighbors are happy, too. <laughs> uh, you're back there? I am back here. I'm out of gears already. What do you know? How do I get up to this high of a gear so quickly? So one thing I've noticed with Scott that when he's on my bike, he's got a little, little faster pace. <laughs> <laughs> That's because this bike goes on a big old gigantic, what is it, 120 horsepower, 180, <laughs> 1,000 horsepower, is that what we're on? Yes. 87 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, maximum horsepower is at 9,000 RPM. I think I misstated that earlier. Uh -huh. All right, so what don't you like about the bike? Uh, it's red. No, just kidding. All right, so this has nothing to do with the bike, but I think should have got the big panniers, the big whiteies. Mm -hmm. Extra, so you have room for my stuff. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, just uh, Yeah, and we know where that's going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not carrying your crap. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't like the horn on that bike. The horn's too wimpy. Give us a little sound here. Yeah, see. yeah that's terrible. Yes. <laughs> All right, needs a horn. Needs a horn. And the I throttle think... the throttle's way too light. The spring's not heavy enough, so when you're standing... And on the dirt and stuff, you tend to oh goose, yeah, you can goose, any bump you're goosing the throttle goose it and all for that. sure, uh huh. And okay. traction control will kill you in the off road if you don't turn oh, it off. <laughs> sure, in the dirt, as we've seen a few times, traction control means you're not moving. <laughs> but it, your bike is going to stand still. What it does is it just buries itself. <laughs> right. And then, and then falls. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whee! Flickety flick this bike. Where are we? Where are we? There's an airplane trying to escape over here. Some things I really like about that bike. That's probably going to be on every bike that I buy from now on. Is cruise control. Cruise control is awesome, isn't it? Cruise control is a wonderful thing. I can say that the lack of cruise control is not awesome. <laughs> I really like how it just wants to lay right over. It's just super, super flicky. For as uh, big and heavy as it is, yeah, on the road, it's a wonderful bike on the road. Yeah. Watch these turns in here. Car coming. Thank you. So I'm trying to think of something else I don't like about this bike, and I'm really struggling. The the heat, the heat in the between the legs is definitely yeah. The heat is a maybe number one, but yeah. Awesome. Nice. So overall, it's got on your bike. Gonna have to give it a. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it a, a nine out of ten farkles here because the heat is roasting my um, chestnuts. <laughs> uh, Christmas though, that's a pretty good thing. Yeah, I mean. Uh, so this is a really fun bike to ride. I'm really having a good time. That's the important thing. This is, I'm going to look forward to the next time we do a Scott on your bike with somebody. Again, if you want us to review your bike, give us a message through YouTube, and we would be happy to count your farkles. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give Doug his bike back. He can feel, uh, he can feel whole again. Kind of on a whole hill here. Oh, it takes my leg forever to get over this <laughs> gear. All right. It's not leaning over as much as normal right now because Just pull the slant. There. That's fine. Okay. So, all right. I'm gonna say I'm a fan. I'm a fan of your bike. That's what I'm gonna go with. And I'm a fan of your helmet because you kind of look like a patriotic Stig. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. All right, one last walk around. Really digging it. I like the look at the front, too. It's not goofy looking. It's kind of mean looking. It's not... What's funny uh, is these beaks really don't serve much purpose. No. Anything, but without the beak, they look really bad. It's not an adventure bike without that. Right? And it's a throwback to the old days with the high fender on the first adventure bikes that were not really adventure bikes, more off-roaders. Like vestigial. Mm -hmm. Vestigial beak. <laughs> All right, let's go for a ride. Okay. Okay, so this is the first bike we've done with Scott on your bike, but I want to ride your motorcycle too.
So if you would like your bike reviewed on Scott on Your Bike, shoot me a message, reach us through Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, and tell us what you got. And we'll meet up somewhere and I'll get on your bike. We'll talk to you and find out uh, what you've done to it. We'll ask you to show us your farkles and we'll, uh, we'll get some more bikes.